So, we've got a presidential election coming up in the next 15 months are going to be the best reality television available. Lots of storylines out there. We've got a group of Rand Paul supporters that photobombed Ted Cruz's presidential announcement. Bernie Sanders has caught fire. Uh, granted, that's a worst case scenario. And then there's Trump. You might be asking yourself, what issues do I need to think about when choosing a president? Is it Planned Parenthood, Cecil the Lion, the gays, Donald Trump's hair? Actually, no. The most important issue in this campaign is actually also one of the most boring ones. But stay with me because the devil's in the details. It's campaign finance reform, specifically the effects of Citizens United from 2010. What is that? But when Citizens United removed the corporate ban on federal election spending, the states followed. Every state in the country reverted back to the wild, wild west of rich guys and corporations just buying the government they prefer. And now with the Citizens United decision, what the Supreme Court said to all of these billionaires, go for it. They essentially would say anything goes. That I think money corrupts the process. There are no rules in terms of how to finance campaigns. The most misguided, naive, uninformed, egregious decision of the United States Supreme Court, I think, in the 21st century. There aren't a lot of functioning democracies around the world that work this way. But Justice Scalia, who voted with the majority, disagrees. As a person, you worry at all that there's too much money in politics. No, you know, I really don't. Get the, the premise is freedom of speech. The more speech, the better. This yes. is not free speech. This is not what the founders intended, is it? This is not fair. Um, to somehow view money as not having an effect on election, a corrupting effect on, effect on election flies in the face of reality. The Citizens United ruling is split up into two parts. First, that money used on campaigns is protected under free speech in the First Amendment. The second, granting corporate personhood to corporations who spend money on elections. Cor corporations are people, my friend. A corporation is not a person. Okay, human beings, my friend. No, Governor Romney, corporations are not people. <laughs> to be fair, though, Mitt Romney does have a good understanding of this issue, at least when it's going against him. In, in the case of the Democratic Party, I don't mean to be terribly partisan, but I kind of am. Uh, <laughs> uh, in, in case of the Democratic Party, the largest contributors to the Democratic Party are the teachers unions, the federal teachers unions. And so if they can elect someone, then that person is supposed to be representing the public vis-a-vis -vis the, the teachers union, but actually most of their money came from the teachers union. It's an extraordinary conflict of interest. That's something I think is a problem and should be addressed. And Governor Romney has a good point there. Donations from teachers unions can have a corrupting effect on our education system and the policies that we decide. But you also have to realize that corporations who have a lot more cash to throw around also have a corrupting effect. You know what you could buy now? You can buy the United States government. You could own the United States government. You could own various states. You can own county commissioners. You can own governors. Pretty good deal. So the way this cycle works is a corporation or entity will give money to a politician or their super PAC, something to help them get elected, and then that politician will write legislation that gives them a special tax break, a subsidy, or a government contract, or some other kind of goodie. Then they take these rewards and use that money to go buy more politicians. It's sort of insulting to have taxpayer money go to an entity that turns around and then lobbies for more with that money. This issue is usually brought up by people on the left, but corruption in Washington, D.C. is very bipartisan. And Democrats aren't uh, entirely innocent of this in the past. Well, guess who the president's raising from? The very banks he's supposed to regulate. He went to Wall Street, had a fundraiser, $35,800 a ticket, and you know who the host was? Goldman friggin' Sachs. You know, I had to raise a lot of money for my campaign. To show you how this works out, when Goldman Sachs was found to have committed fraud and contributed to the 2008 financial collapse, the Obama administration through Eric Holder let them off with a slap on the wrist fine and no admission of wrongdoing and nobody went to jail. There's nobody who operates in politics that has perfectly clean hands on this issue. So far, over 300 people have declared their candidacy for president, but money is what clearly separates the winners from the losers and there's a lot of money out there. For example, leading the way is Jeb Bush, whose super PAC has already raised over $100 million. 
Holy shnikes. How does this affect our politicians? When somebody in the United States Senate has to go up to the table and cast a vote, and you're sitting there and thinking, if I vote against the interest of Wall Street, if I vote against the interest of the military industrial complex, if I vote against the insurance companies or the drug companies, will I go home next week and find millions of dollars of ads bombarding my state against me because I cast that vote? Maybe I shouldn't cast that vote. How do you do your job? which is trying to legislate, trying to figure out how we solve the enormous problems facing our country when half of your mind is figuring out how do I raise $5 million in the next year. So what are some things we can do to combat this issue? We need a level playing field and we need to go back to the realization that Teddy Roosevelt had, that we have to have a limit on the flow of money and that corporations are not people. That's why we have different laws that govern corporations than govern individual citizens. Number one, if you're putting money into campaigns, you got to tell the world immediately who you are. No more anonymity. Two, I would have full disclosure, no exceptions. Number three, I would make tax equal to individuals, whatever that limit is, $1,000, $2,500, not twice as much as it is now. Number four, I think super PACs are illegal. Number five, I would separate lobbyists from check giving. You can do one or the other if you're a registered lobbyist. You can bring an idea or you can bring a check. You can't do both. And finally, I would have criminal penalties in the law. I would make campaign reform the first issue in America. Our country's headed in the wrong direction. That last guy speaking was Buddy Romer, who ran for president as a Republican in 2012. Now, the reason you've probably never heard of him is that despite getting the necessary poll numbers, he was shut out of all the GOP debates simply because he did not raise enough money. <laughs> Senator Bernie Sanders has also proposed a constitutional amendment to deal with this issue. The amendment that I am bringing forth now, I think, in fact, deals perhaps with the most fundamental issue that we can address. And that is the integrity of American democracy and our political system. And what this amendment does is establishes a deficit neutral reserve fund to allow for a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United and to increase transparency in our political process. <sighs> wow. Gee, Bernie, I love you, but that's way too boring for the average person. Let's throw some Dr. Dre underneath it. Now, on this issue, there are no greater experts in the world than the people sitting around this room. And the issue I am raising today is, are you comfortable with an American political system which is increasingly being dominated by a handful of billionaires, whether they are Republicans, whether they are Democrats? Do you want to run for office and understand that your campaign will be significantly less important than the independent expenditures that may be spent in that campaign? Are we a nation in which we pride ourselves on one person, one vote, or do we sit aside and say to an ordinary American, you got to vote, but the Koch brothers and other billionaires can spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars? We have got to ask ourselves, do we want a political system in which a handful of billionaires can buy and sell members of the United States Congress? Because that's really what it's about. Now, who are those members of Congress elected with the help of billionaires going to be representing? Do you think they're going to be representing the middle class and working families in this country? You're going to be a paid employee for the billionaire class. I think enough is enough. We've got to overturn Citizens United. We need full disclosure. When people put ads on television, I would ask for a yes vote. So now let's rank the candidates as to how effective they would be on this issue. Number one, Bernie Sanders. He proposed a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United, and he does not have a super PAC. Number two, Jill Stein from the Green Party. Unfortunately, corporations and big money can still buy what they want and are still buying our candidates. She said that she would vote to overturn Citizens United 
and she and the Green Party as a whole don't take any money from corporations. Number three, Senator Rand Paul. Even though he does support Citizens United, he has some good common sense ways to rein back corruption. What I would do is I would take all government contracts and I would put a clause in them that says, if you want to do work with the government, if you're going to get this $10 billion contract, if you're a defense contractor, or if you're a big union and you're going to get a big contract, you sign the contract, the part of the clause of the contract says, uh, your contract's only valid if you uh, don't participate in the uh, uh, donation to candidates. Now you might be wondering why I didn't mention Hillary Clinton, who's also made that part of her campaign. And while she has spoke about this, with all the money that she's raised from Wall Street, that would kind of be like uh, Barry Bonds saying he's theoretically against steroids in baseball. Or Adrian Peterson saying, in theory, it's a good idea not to beat your kids. Her saying it is just not believable. I hope you consider this issue as you keep up with the campaigns. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Greatest living issue that confronts us today. So whether the corporation shall control the people or the people shall control the corporations.